Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new series for Planet Zoo. Welcome to my latest zoo, Castaway Keys. This is easily one of the most ambitious projects that I've ever done, specifically just because it really goes into a lot more theming and a lot more fun than my other projects. Without further ado, welcome guys. I can't wait to get into this with all of you. If you had asked me to condense over four hours of building into one video, I don't know how I would be able to do that, but apparently I did. Welcome everyone to Castaway Keys. This is our newest Planet Zoo project that I am beyond excited to go into because it is our Tropical Pack Mini Zoo. In case if you guys are new here, I typically do zoos for every single pack that comes out, more or less. Uh, and the Tropical Pack, I was like, okay, listen, I've been doing some really realistic zoos recently. I think Wildwoods was going pretty much over there. Um, Sonora Springs definitely does. In case you guys were Boggy Bottom viewers, I definitely went really realistic with over there. But one of the things I felt the need to do was a little bit more of a colorful zoo. A little bit more of a playful zoo. Now, if you guys do want some hyper-realistic people, I really do suggest you guys check out the wonderful team over at um, St. Reginald Zoo. That is Just Goron, that is Eben, and that is Y Andrews. Three incredible creators. Go check them out in case if you guys want something like that. But if you want your old leafy boy, welcome! Uh, so the idea of this entire zoo, uh, the lore, if that kind of makes sense, is that it's kind of like a castaway shipwreck kind of vibe. Uh, it's located in the Southeast Asia, um, kind of like the Pacific Islands area. I had like lore all kind of written out for it, but we're just going to build it as we kind of go on. So as you can tell, we are doing some very fun stuff with these lovely new Indonesian pieces. So this is the Indonesian set and it looks beautiful. Here I am kind of just playing with the pieces for not really the first time, uh, but I'm still trying to get accustomed to them by the time that I was making this video. Uh, I was making this relatively soon after I got access, but still. I feel like now I can do stuff so much better. So maybe we could go back to the entrance and really rework all of this. So obviously we are building on a diorama map. Uh, now don't let that scare you away too much because I make it so that it's just all ocean around this map. Uh, and I really wanted the tropical terrain because obviously we're working on like this beautiful tropical shipwrecked island. So that's going to be really fun to work with. So I kind of sculpted the island beforehand, before I even had the pack, and I was like, okay, listen, I know it's going to be tropical, so I got to make something fun with it. So that's kind of the idea that we were going with over there. Moving on from there, though, I get started on the actual gate itself. So I believe this is based off of a Bali gate. Uh, so if I'm just going to pull that up right here, it's called the Pura Lahur Lempoyang, I believe. It's located in East Bali, and it's just so beautiful. So I have a little bit of my own interpretation of it. And about right now, let me actually cut it off right here. Now! Okay, there you go. You guys could actually see that pop up right there. It's a very beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Piece of work, piece of art right there. And I really wanted to go for that kind of vibe when it came down to all said and done. And I think I really was able to master it pretty well. It works so well with the sunset once you actually see that. Uh, so stick around for the cinematics. But we build so much in the meantime, so I hope you guys are able to watch all of it. Uh, but you can see we're working with a lot of layers. Layering is something that when you're working with Southeastern um, Asian architecture, it's something that is super important. So for me, I was slightly basing it off of that Balinesian, Balinese, Bali architecture. Please let me know the proper way to say it in the comments below because obviously I don't know right now. But I really wanted to emulate what was going on over here. So I take a lot of inspiration from that gate itself, but I also bring in a little bit of my own leafy goodness in here too. I tend to have a lot of fun with my builds and sometimes it really doesn't mean I'm giving the most um, accurate look of something, but it definitely means that I'm having fun with it. And at the end of the day, that's all I want to do at Planet Zoo, is have fun with the game, because that's what's important to me. At the end of the day, it's a game. Especially now that I have, like, a real, real, real full-time not job, full, wow, full-time job. I'm like, okay, I just really want to, um, 
have fun with the game first and foremost have fun with youtube second most and yeah just generally enjoy the stuff that i put out so i hope you all enjoy it as well but you can see we're adding a few little figures over here these are the new indonesian statues so i kind of make those and i put them aside we are working on a gibbon habitat today as you could tell from the thumbnail they also share their exhibit with asian small clawed otters i really wanted to give it a little bit more of like life in there especially in the water because i had this really cool idea to work with the water another thing i do as well is use the tails of the peacock statue from the india pack the india pack and the indonesian theme just work so well together um you just have this beautiful harmonious marriage between these two packs and it's just so lovely just to see all these pieces work together I don't know. Love to see that stuff. Anyways, I should probably also mention I am not using mods in this zoo. Uh, I use mods in a few of my other projects. If you guys are new here, Hope Harbor Zoo uses scenery mods and um, and animal mods, of course. And my latest Florida project, uh, Sarasota Zoo, Zoo Sarasota, that also uses mods. So in case if you guys want to see what those are like, you guys can go check those out. But this is meant to be put on the workshop once it's done. So I want to make sure that people who don't use mods are able to have the same experience that I had putting it together, that I had really just making it and just I have looking at it. So that's always the most important thing over here. Now, a trick that I believe a lot of people should learn how to do is using the habitat gates to actually indicate where you want a square to be uh, in terms of fences. So many times when you are working with like these very straight waterways, you might find that putting down the habitat gate first, then triggering on angle snap with the space bar or in the habitat path page, um, not the habitat path, the normal path page or fence page, fence, fence page. Um, you may oftentimes find that that really helps you create these nice right angles. And especially for something like this, where I want this very beautiful sculpted, um, waterway, kind of like an aqueduct going through this entire part, um, really wanted it to stick out. And I think it looks so cool when all is said and done. It's kind of like the divider between this island, uh, because on the left we'll have the Fusa and on the right we'll have like the Red River Hog and the Asian Water Monitor. You may also notice in the background that there is a, um, there is a second island and that's where I'll be throwing the sloth once I actually build for that. I haven't built for the sloth yet, but I have already built up to the Asian Water Monitor. So you guys will have a few speed builds coming in the next few days. Super excited that you guys are able to check those out. And it's just going to be super awesome just to be able to see the reactions toward those. Because this is easily one of my favorite projects. It feels like, I don't know. I always was like, oh my gosh, this project feels like a beautiful marriage between like my theming skills. And yeah, just having fun to begin with. So it's just really cool to see all that come into play. Uh, what I'm doing over here is getting that fence to work so I could actually continue that on through the bottom of the habitat. So the idea was to have this gate serve as kind of like a oh, kind of like a uh, passageway for both the water, which would go into the exhibit for the otters, as well as the guests to kind of look over. So you could see I was playing with the lighting right there and it worked out perfectly. Like the sunset is exactly where I want it to be. And it's just so beautiful. I kind of curved that little uh, waterfall area down there. And I kind of like how it looks too. It's just a really nice kind of a, uh, slow vibe down there and i also add those snakes over there what i'm doing over here doesn't count uh i actually fix that up later but i did add those little snake statues down there just to give it a little bit more of a very interesting vibe now even though i am not going hyper realism over here i definitely do want to include like a little bit of logic so ideally the otters would be able to climb up that waterfall uh maybe they would climb up the sides with a little bit of branches or something but I don't want them to escape, so I put that little bit of mesh right there so that, you know, the guests wouldn't fall in there, it would catch guest items, and the otters wouldn't, like, escape. Because that would be bad. Even though it is an island, they really wouldn't cause too much damage, but we don't want that to happen. What I also do over here is start using the stalactite rocks as a way to create this beautiful mud bank wall. This is something that I picked up from many Planet Zoo creators, but I feel like the most iconic one to do this is Mr. Caesar Creates. He has some of the most beautiful builds in Planet Zoo. Very jealous of his style, but honestly, uh, this is my tip to everyone. Focus on your own style, even if you kind of build off of other people. 
just work on getting those interesting quirks that you build into your parks as something for yourself. So even though I take away some ideas from other Planet Zoo creators, it's always my build at the end of the day because I put that little bit of my own leafy spunk in there. And it's just always super awesome just to be able to see that. Always super great to be able to see Planet Zoo creators inspire other people. And I get inspired by the community too. If you're on the Reddit, I'm looking at your posts. I always love to see them. If you're on ZSU or if you're on like Bro Nation, I always love to see your builds in there. It's always super awesome just to be able to see like what the community does with all these wonderful pieces and all these wonderful packs. Moving on from there, I really wanted to give this little bit of a kind of river a bit more of an organic shape. But before I do that, I want to add those special effects in here just to make sure that the water feels a little bit more alive because water is life after all. So I start to throw a few of those special effects down there just to give it a little bit more of a zing, a little bit more of a zang. You guys know how it is. So I add that and I start to marry the two rocks together. So I marry both the stalactites and the normal tropical rocks in here. The tropical rocks are kind of like my standard palette throughout this entire build. You can see some of them are out there in the background near that little volcano. Yes, it is on a volcano island, volcanic island. So let's hope we don't have any Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom situations happening over here. I feel like that would be very bad. But I got to work on the actual underwater viewing down here. Again, just using those beautiful Indonesian pieces. They really, really stand out. Um, and doing this little column that I used before. I wanted to change out the color so it marries it a little bit better, but I think I actually keep it just for a little bit of contrast. I'm not sure what I do. Nope, I change out the colors for the other stuff too because it was kind of easier. <laughs> so you can see over here, I'm giving that river a little bit more of organicness. Uh, that's something I can always recommend that you guys do. Just making sure that your builds don't feel so modular, but they feel like they're organic. Uh, start to create lore for your zoo. Start to create like situations that indicate where habitats need to stop and where they need to start. A lot of the times when I have talked to real zoo creators or directors or anyone who really works at a zoo, uh, you'll find that there's so many aspects that go into creating zoo habitats and zoo layouts that you don't really think about. Say for example, there's a zoo near me that even though like we want to put a habitat in one place, the issue why we can't build over there is because there's a water line right below it and construction can't work under there. So it's just very interesting just to see stuff like that come up and really influence builds. So give your zoo a little bit of lore, give your zoo a little bit of history. It always goes such a long way to help it stand out. And that's something that I see with a lot of zoo projects that so many people love. Uh, Elm, Hill zoo, Elm Hill City Zoo, try saying that five times fast, is one that I always see this in, just seeing the history of that zoo, uh, especially with Caesar's latest, like, reptile house. Beautiful. Uh, even St. Reginald Zoo, even, like, Key Park Zoo by Just Goron, always super awesome just to be able to see that lore come into place, and it's just really great to be able to see other people do that as well. Moving on to our actual viewing gallery right over here. It's something I really wanted to include just to help it really settle in um, because we are working with gibbons. Gibbons are very arboreal species that are just full of so much energy. They are full of so much spunk that you really want to see them from above. And we have a lot of viewing areas where you are able to see the gibbons from. And because of that, I really wanted to give the guests enough areas to view them and see where they can display all their unique behaviors. So we have this little uh, raised platform over here. I'm using a mix of the Indonesian stone and a few twilight pieces in here as well to create those little um, stairway marks. So that's something I really wanted to include right there. Just a small bit of realism. Even though I said that this isn't really one of my more realistic zoos, I still like to include those small little motifs in here to really help sell it like Oh, this is a nice little thing that I can use for my project in case of someone's kind of like logging into the zoo for the first time. So that's something I wanted to include right there. And I continue on throughout here and start to add a few more little details, such as where all of like the holdings going to be, where the rest of the gibbons can go kind of play. One of the challenges of this build was trying to figure out where the habitat will need to end because we're working with our an arboreal species that can easily escape, as well as a semi-aquatic uh, 
rodent, not rodent, oh geez, mustelid, there we go, that easily can find its way out of habitats. And this is part of the reason why I wanted to be like, oh, what if we don't go full realism with it? Because taking into account all those tiny details, it's something that really I enjoy for a challenge for some zoos. Say, for example, Zoo Sarasota is a zoo like that where I'm like, I want to focus on all of those tiny details. I want to focus on all that stuff. But at the end of the day, this is a game and I want to have a lot of fun with it. So taking into account that stuff, really doesn't jive well for me for a build like this, but I still try my best to at least imply it a little bit. So say for example, this little well barrier right here, where I have this nice organic shape with a little bit of motifs in there just for a little bit of theming. It really helps sell like, you know, the gibbons won't go down into that lower part. The otters won't jump from a height that high. I just really do love doing stuff like that. It's super fun. But building off of there, we continue that little ridge over here. And I really do love how this looks when all is said and done. You guys can skip ahead right now to check out that stuff, but I really do love seeing this come together, especially this part right here. Uh, one of the things that I really wanted to focus on for this entire park is my inner koali. I feel like we all watch Koali Zoo at some point, and it's something that I really fell in love with when I was first starting off in Planet Zoo, because it's such an inspirational project. It is such a beautiful project, and I really wanted to emulate what made that special to me with this park because again we're kind of building in that same vein uh i'm not really sure how that got skipped ahead oh gosh so i guess i made those windows and those shutters <laughs> in the meantime uh those are all custom windows custom shutters i apologize those might have gotten cut out or something maybe i wasn't recording my sincerest apologies um i make some more later down the line uh, so if you guys want to see how those are made, just, you know, just believe that they were. Uh, so I have that as a little bit of a focal point in the background. And I do a whole lot of other things too. So I continue that little, um, like those little barriers, I guess you could call them, all throughout here. And I have this be like a little pond section. So maybe, inshallah, if we do get koi one day, I would love to throw them in this little pond. I feel like that'd be a super adorable thing to have in here. I don't know. I just feel like that is just begging for koi in there. But besides that, I really wanted to hammer down what would make this feel a little bit more organic, especially considering the fact that this is our first habitat. I really wanted to make sure that the entire section around the habitat itself really solidified what I want Castaway Keys to feel like, especially given the fact that it is such a vibrant build. I really wanted it to feel super special. And one of the things I used for inspiration in here is Disney's Animal Kingdom. I feel like as zoo people, we all look towards Animal Kingdom and San Diego Zoo for being like the best of the best. And that is without a doubt, like unequivocatively true. Animal Kingdom especially has some really, really interesting theming when it comes to like their whole Southeast Asia, India area, especially when they have like those beautiful, beautiful, um, kind of like in construction temples with all the bamboo stuff. So that's my main inspiration for these little climbing frames over here, which speaking of the climbing frames, the Gibbons can finally use the vines, which is just really awesome to see. Just being able to break on the vines, specifically the liana vines, it's just so awesome to see them play around in this habitat and really explore it to their heart's content. This is exactly what perfected this animal to me. And it's just really awesome to be able to see so much quality in one animal to begin with. So I love the fact that they were able to be upgraded for that. Even though, you know, like, we had our quips and qualms with the metal beam and frame for the Siamang. It's just awesome that we got an official gibbon. And with it, we got official upgrades for both the Siamang and the gibbon to break it on something that makes a little bit more logistical sense. So you can see I'm adding a few more climbing frames all throughout here. A little swinging vines and such uh just to help keep it a little bit more logical i don't know i like doing that kind of stuff and it really helps fill out the rest of the habitat too which is awesome what i get to work on over here is another kind of quote unquote implied building obviously in here it would probably be animal storage it would probably be holdings luckily lar gibbons are very tiny uh, which I never realized before because they're always kind of far away from me. But Largibbons are extremely small animals, especially when you look at them in-game. So it's just very interesting to see how little space they take up. 
So I wanted to give them a little bit of a holding area. And because of that, I wanted to bring in two very distinct Indonesian building styles. So I have a lot more of a rustic one over here using the Arctic pieces. The Arctic pack is just constantly just always such an underappreciated gem in the Planet Zoo community because of their beautiful wood pieces. They really help fill out a section like this, and it just looks incredible when all is said and done. So I have a few of those in there, and I also use some of those adornments on the side, just brings in a lot more color that I think really helps itself for a build like that. Moving off of there, I also have that building right next to it that brings in color in the building itself. It's a little bit more tan with a little bit more of a redder uh, ceiling, which really does look super beautiful. Love to see that stuff. All throughout here, I also throw those strangler vi strangler fig roots. Uh, it really does help sell those mud banks when all is really being worked on. Um, and it's just so gorgeous. I love it. I love seeing stuff like that. So I throw a few of those all throughout there. And what I also do right here is just add a Siamang frame. I, they're a gibbon, I'm sorry. I add a little frame for the gibbons to climb out right over the water because it's just an idea that, you know, I just love seeing animals go over water. It's always so satisfying, especially when they're hopping like from island to island. It's just so cool. It makes like my little serotonin bubble up. Adding the rest of the foliage in here is what we're working on next. So we are using a very distinct foliage palette, nothing like we've really used before, because we're finally being able to build for tropical animals. Uh, Florida kind of scratched that itch a little bit, but I get to use a lot more aggressively tropical plants. Uh, so I'm using a whole lot of buffalo grass in here to begin with. Uh, one of the things I always recommend people do when you're building in Planet Zoo, whether it's franchise, whether it's challenge mode, is to ignore what the animals want. I know, it seems very ironic, but if you ignore the animals' foliage requirements, it only takes away 1% of their welfare, two at most. So it's just very cool to see that you can make so much more. You can make a beautiful zoo by just ignoring one simple thing and the game will absolutely not punish you for it. It's just great to be able to see that come into play. So I use a whole lot of buffalo grass. I use also the tops of the ponytail palms. They have this very unique kind of like droopy look to it. And I use a whole bunch of different palms. So we just recently got, I believe the Kentia palms. Those are a little bit smaller ones that I use kind of sparingly in this first part. And I also decorate the water as well, as well as use all the leaf litter. Even though it's not flexi color, it is still such a wonderful piece that I'm trying to use more often. And it just really, really helps to sell the vibe of I'm in a tropical place right now. I also try and throw some ferns up there, those bird nest ferns, but it really didn't go over too well. I'm not really a big fan of how they looked, but what I do enjoy the look of is the buffalo grass kind of hanging over the side of these little banks. It really looks super awesome just to be able to see like this nice lush habitat really start to droop over and feel a little bit more overgrown. Really is super awesome to be able to build something like that. I also add a few little elements of theming throughout here. I have this little bit of a spilled pot over here, just like maybe a palm was in there at one point, but I kind of open that up just to give it a little bit more of like a distinct look. I don't know. It really helps sell the vibe of, you know, this is lived in. Someone like is going through this zoo and just being able to add those small, tiny little details always helps it so much more. Adding a little bit more buffalo grass up here as well. One of the biggest things I can recommend for any prospect planet zoo builders out there is to decorate the outside of the habitat just as much and just as well as you would decorate the inside of the habitat. It really does help set a picture for your build and it's exactly the same thing when you're framing a photo. You could have the most beautiful photo ever, but if it doesn't look good in a frame, then what's the point of a beautiful photo? You really got to work on that frame. So what I also do throughout here is make custom plants. I was super satisfied with these. So I combine the fig plants with, I forget the actual name of those. I think those are like some lilies. They're a tropical plant. They came in the South America pack. They're just really good pieces to be said. And I use a whole bunch of those throughout there. And I combine the two of them to create 
to create this beautiful look. What I also do is actually get these guests in the zoo so I could actually see what it feels like when people are going in and out of it. Uh, and it really does look super awesome to begin with. I also add a few Vista points throughout here just to give these guests a little bit of an area to go to. And without further ado, we enter the cinematics. Thank you all so much for stopping by. This was an incredible build to do, and we have so many awesome more things to come on the horizon. So be sure to stay subscribed if you aren't already and check out the next video that will come out for Castaway Keys. We are also wrapping up some other projects on the channel, so keep your eyes posted for that. And thank you all so much for stopping by. Thank you Frontier for allowing me early access to this pack. Really makes my day every single time I see that I'm still being able to get that. Without further ado, thank you all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next episode of Castaway Keys. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Goodbye now. Also, because I'm feeling spicy, there's a giveaway. Just type down below, Gibo, and then you'll be entered to win a copy of your very own tropical pack. It will be announced next week on the same day.